Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. So Ramadan is approaching and it's approaching really fast. And one of the things we need to prepare for is the fasting, the act of fasting itself. And the act of fasting itself, the challenges that one can face are different from between one country and the other. In some countries, uh, fasting is very short uh, because the day is very short. And in other countries, fasting is very long because the day is very long. And in both of these circumstances, there are challenges. Because for a place where fasting is short, a person might not feel the physical benefits of fasting. And they might not feel the spiritual benefits of fasting as well. On the day where it's long, the person might be too physically tired to experience the physical aspects or the metaphysical, the spiritual aspects of fasting. So we have to start preparing for fasting. But in our preparation for fasting, what do we keep in mind? What we need to keep in mind is that fasting is of three levels. There is the ordinary people fasting, and there is the special people fasting, and then there is the extra special people fasting. And in Arabic, this is Sawm al Awam, and then Sawm al Khawas, and Sawm Khawas al Khawas. So, what's the difference between these three levels, and how do they come into helping us prepare for Ramadan? The first level, the ordinary fasting, or the ordinary people fasting, the mere objective of it is people just stop eating and drinking. That's it. They stop committing the val invalidators of fasting. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said uh, in a hadith that How many people that fast that get nothing, no benefit, no spiritual benefit out of uh, their fasting except that they feel hungry and they feel thirsty. Feeling hungry and thirsty is beneficial because fasting is physically beneficial to people. But the ultimate purpose of fasting is not just merely physical, it is very spiritual. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Baqarah that He has commanded us to fast and He has written fasting for us, just like He has written fasting for other nations before us, so that we may achieve that awe of God, that awareness of God. So we really don't want just to be at the level of the ordinary people fasting. So hence we have to look at the next level. And the next level is the special fasting. And the special fasting is different from the, the ordinary fasting in the sense that during the time that the person is fasting, they also abstain from committing anything that might lessen the reward of their fasting. So that is, they would protect their limbs, their eyes, their ears, their tongue, their hands and their feet um, from committing anything that is sinful. Um, an example is that um, if somebody is fasting, they should not be uh, backstabbing someone. They should not be backbiting someone and talking behind, behind their back because that will basically use the tongue for something that is sinful as well as will use the ear to hear something bad about some, somebody else. So a person who is trying to achieve the special people fasting or the special fasting, they have to protect their limbs, they have to protect their eyes, they have to protect their ears, they have to protect their tongues, that's three. They have to protect their other um, uh, peripherals like hands and feet. Um, and on top of that, when they come to break their fast, they don't only break it on permissible food or food that was bought using money that was gained in a permissible way but also they do not overeat. They do not overindulge in halal, well-acquired uh, well and well-paid-for food. No, they eat 
and they keep the amount of food that they consume to only what they need, to only to the bare minimum, to stay in that st status of focus and that status of spirituality. Because overeating basically takes the person away from that physical status, that physical flow and station that they are at, and gets them indulging into the physical world. So these are five things. The sixth thing is that after they break their fast, they maintain their heart. They maintain the outlook on their reward, on their deed of fasting between fear that it is not accepted and between hope that it is accepted. So it is walking that path of moderation. So someone doesn't completely despair that their fasting is not accepted. At the same time, they're not too hopeful of God's mercy that they will accept, they will say, no, I've done awesome, I've done great. That's the second level of fasting. And this is the fasting that we should be aiming for and we should be training for. This is the fasting that starting from today and moving forward until Ramadan comes, you could practice it every Monday and Thursday. So every Monday and Thursday, it is a prophetic tradition to fast. Many people, they just wake up and they fast until sunset. And now we're in winter, so it's great. And you could slowly and gradually build up the number of hours you can fast um, if you start from now. So when Ramadan comes and you have 16 hours to fast, you have already built that stamina. So when Ramadan comes and you're fasting, you're able to focus on spirituality. You don't just focus on, you know, feeling hungry and feeling tired and not able to do your work and not able to focus and not able to spend time with the family. No, your body physically is already used to it. So now you could elevate yourself to the spiritual level and start doing things that are extra than what you were doing before Ramadan. And this is the fasting we should be aiming for, most of us. Now, there is another level of fasting, which is the extra special fasting. And this extra special fasting requires even more training because that extra special fasting is the fasting that you feel it when you have strayed from it. So the other, the other two levels of fasting, you feel the spirituality when you are focused and when you adhere to those conditions that we spoke about. You feel spiritually elevated. The extra special fasting is the other way around. You are in constant, excuse me, you're in constant state of spirituality and it doesn't break. And if it breaks, then you feel it. You feel that negative energy in your body and in your spirit. And this requires a lot of training. And the way to get to it is to actually be able to be with the divine and be in awe and be in the presence of the divine and by doing good and being spiritual throughout the year. And this is how you train for it. It takes, it, it can take people years of practice. And then, you know, as they improve themselves and as they get closer to God, to Allah Almighty, then they're going to get to that level. And that level is very high. And that level is very, very sweet and very spiritual. I hope this was helpful. I hope also we all start preparing for Ramadan. Let me know if you have any questions. And inshallah, I will see you in the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.